Hi, I'm Mitch, and this is the first video in a two-part series that I'm going to do on the difference between the part design and part workbenches. I'm going to show a pretty significant preference towards part design over the part workbench. Now, I know that the part workbench has some capabilities that the part design workbench doesn't. However, I think that if you're coming from a different CAD software or you're brand new to computer aided drafting, uh, the part design workflow is going to be a lot more intuitive than the part workflow. So let's go here to the FreeCAD documentation. I, um, I just came to FreeCAD and came down to part design to get to this part design workbench documentation and I'll put all of the links for these uh, web pages in the description and I want to read you just a piece from this part design workbench um, that I found very useful while the part workbench is based on a constructive solid geometry methodology the part design workbench uses a parametric feature editing methodology and I found this very useful in two ways. Number one, it points out that the logic between these two, the, the design paradigms between these two, is fundamentally different. And second, that the part design workbench is a parametric modeling software. So parametric modeling, I think where most of us are familiar with, is you create a basic solid and then you add features on top of that solid until the final shape is obtained. Um, so what is a constructive solid geometry? So this gives a pretty decent explanation of constructive solid geometry. When we're talking about constructive solid geometry, you'll hear two pieces of vocabulary, which is that we utilize Boolean operations to combine primitive parts. So a primitive part is typically a sphere, a cube, a cylinder, or a cone. Um, however, one caveat to that is that in FreeCAD you can make a fairly complex sketch, pad that sketch to create a fairly complex geometry and that complex geometry would still be treated as a primitive. It doesn't look very primitive but you can treat it just like you would treat any of these other primitives. And then a boolean operation on those primitives is to say something like I want to add these three things together in this way or I want to combine these and only maintain the common surfaces, or I want to cut this from that. One last thing I want to show you in the documentation is again here in the part design page. We can scroll on down and find this hyperlink to part and part design. And I just want to read you this one uh, excerpt from that. It is a good idea to use one or the other until the user is comfortable with one and then learn the other. It is also typically recommended that new users not mix the two part and part design workbench until the ramifications of doing so are understood. Okay, so let's open up FreeCAD. We'll create a new document and I'll do my usual thing of going to the part design workbench and going into Sketcher and now uh, and choosing the XZ plane. And now I want to talk about some of the rules, at least that I understand regarding parametric modeling software, and I'll show you that they don't necessarily apply if you're using that uh, part workbench. So here I'm in the part design, I'm in Sketcher that I got to from the part design workbench, and I'm just going to draw a simple square and a circle. And then I'll fast forward while I dimension these. Okay, so I've got a fully defined sketch here, but there are two important rules that most parametric modelers know about parametric modeling. One is that you cannot have create two separate bodies from a sketch, and the other is that you cannot have intersecting lines. And I've broken one of those rules here because you can see that if I go to pad the this sketch, I'm going to create one, two totally separate bodies. So let's close this and we'll go to and we're in part design and we've got our sketch chosen and let's try to pad it and we'll say 10 millimeters and there there's my error the result has multiple solids this is not supported at this time okay but if I go to the part workbench and I select my sketch 
and I use the extrude button and I go 10 millimeters part workbench has no problem having multiple solids okay so if I start all over at the start page and go back to sketch it through part design and I draw and I redraw my box and my circle but this time I cause these two to intersect any parametric modeler knows this is also against the rules because we have intersecting lines and when I go to pad or extrude this it wants to extrude whatever is inside the shape but here where we've got intersecting lines it can't tell if this overlap here is inside or outside of which shape so if I close this and I choose my sketch and I go to pad that I get pad has multiple solids is not supported at this time okay So let's try to do it in the part workbench. Select my sketch and extrude. And again, the part workbench has no problem making that shape. So how do I make this shape in the part design workbench? Well, it's not too tough. Let's start over again. And here, all we'll do is we'll just make the square first and extrude that, and then we'll make the circle. And then I can go back to Sketcher, choose the same plane, draw the circle. I'll have to use a uh, link to external geometry. To, to link to that and now I've got a point to make those concentric and now I can close this and it's already selected so I can pad it up to 10 millimeters so I still end up with the same result it's just a slightly different workflow so now let's go back uh, to the part that I made in part workbench so let's start that design fresh by creating new and then starting from the sketcher workbench and choosing sketcher there and we get this slightly different dialog box because I did not come from the part design workbench and I think I had originally chosen the XZ plane so we'll hit OK and I'm going to draw just my box for now and then close that and go up to the part workbench my sketch is chosen so I'll extrude it from there and then in order to draw my circle I'll have to start another sketch from Sketcher in the XZ plane and I'll have to use a um, create an external geometry here to link the two so I get that dot okay so that's fully constrained we can close that and I can extrude okay and now I need to go back up and go back to my part workbench and I've got my sketch selected so I can extrude that as well to 10 millimeters and we end up with the same thing, but you can see I've got two extrusions here. So now let's look at the tools we have in the Boolean operator toolbar. And this is unique to the part workbench. You won't find this in part design. And let's just play with them. So if I choose extrude 001 and extrude, and I choose to um, make a union, the only thing that you notice is that this looks the same but that turned into a single object over here a fusion that includes those two so let's undo that now if I choose extrude first and then extrude zero one and I choose to make an intersection now it gives me just the place where those two intersected 
and now I have a common with those two underneath. Let's go back. And now if I choose extrude and extrude 0, 1, and I say I want to cut one from the other, it cuts extrude 0, 0, 1 from extrude. Let's undo that. And now what if I choose extrude 0, 0, 1 and extrude and cut? Now it cuts the second one. So it always cuts the second one that I chose. One last thing I'll point out to you is that if we go to the part design workbench, we do have a Boolean uh, tool there as well. However, this has uh, a few more restrictions on it. And to understand the res those restrictions, we'll go back to our part design workbench. And we'll come on down to the description of the Boolean operation. And you're not going to find a well-defined set of rules for an entire workbench. However, if you come down and you click on any one of these tools in that workbench that you'd like to use, for example, the Boolean operation, and then you scroll down to the bottom of any one of those pages, you'll find this section called Limitations. And actually, uh, usage is a pretty good description of the things you can do. And here's how you use it. Here's the rules for how you use it. And then limitations is a good description of the things you can't do with it. So that's another set of rules. So there's where you find some of the rules uh, for using these two workbenches. And there's a quick example of the workflow between the two workbenches. I hope this was helpful.